nice class. It's going to be called Can't Get Right Spirits. All right? It's going to be about the Can't Get Right Spirits. And if you don't know what that is, you do know what it is. You just don't know about what I'm calling it. But we all are familiar. If you've been in the truth for a while, then you familiar with a sister like this or a brother like this or multiple. All right? But let's open up with Sirach chapter 4 and verse 17. We go to this scripture a lot. Sirach chapter 4, verse 17. The book of Sirach chapter 4 and verse 17. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways. The she here is wisdom, right? So this, everybody that comes into the truth, wisdom walks with you by your crooked ways, meaning the, the parts of the old man that you still are struggling to put away once you come into the truth. Right? Wisdom will walk with you in those crooked ways at first. Go ahead. And bring fear and dread upon him. Right. But it will bring fear and dread upon you as it's purging those crooked ways from you. Go ahead. And torment him with her discipline. And wisdom will torment you with its discipline. Go ahead. Until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. So, like I said, we read this scripture all the time, but the thing about it is that bottom part is not a guarantee. It's not a guarantee that you will make it to the point where wisdom will trust your soul. You understand why? The reason being is because a lot of us cannot get past the torment him with her discipline portion of this scripture. The can't get right spirits are the spirits that struggle with being tormented by the discipline that comes with wisdom. Therefore, they never earn the trust of wisdom. That's why they never grow in this truth. Go to Sirach chapter 32 and verse 14. The book of Sirach chapter 32 and verse 14. Go ahead. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline. If you fear the Lord, you'll receive his discipline. And what is his discipline? His discipline is the commandments and the correction that come when you break the commandments in order to build you up to grow in the commandments. You understand? With discipline comes counsel. With discipline comes orders. With discipline comes correction, instruction. So you can get built up to the point where you're able to correct, instruct, so on and so forth. You understand? If you fear the Lord, you're going to receive that discipline. Because as you're coming into the truth, you understand that those crooked ways have to be purged. You have to get told about yourself. You understand? You have to get cut in class. You have to get cut by that officer over you, that sister over you. You understand? That must happen. If you fear the Lord, you're going to receive that. Go ahead. And they that seek him early shall find favor. And if you seek the Lord early, you'll find favor. Go to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 and verse 16. The book of Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 and verse 16. Go ahead. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of so her. So wisdom goes about seeking such as are worthy of her. We read in Sirach chapter 4, you have to make it through the part where you're tormented with her discipline. You understand over a period of time, and then it trusts, it begins to trust your soul. That's when it knows that you're worthy of her. Go ahead. Showeth herself favorably unto them in the ways. Read. And meeteth them in every thought. Wisdom will get to a point where it meets you in every thought. It's able to to guide your mind. Go ahead. For the very true beginning of her. But the beginning of wisdom is what? Is the desire of discipline. So you would never make it to the level where wisdom trusts your soul and deals with you on the next level if you don't desire the discipline that comes with it. You understand? Not only must you receive the discipline, you have to desire the discipline. You understand? Read on. And the care of discipline is love. Right, and the care of discipline is love. Go to Sirach chapter 6 and verse 23. Read the book, that. The book of Sirach chapter 6, verse 23. Go ahead. Give ear, my son. Receive my advice and refuse not 
my counsel. This is wisdom speaking. Go ahead. And put thy feet into her fetters. Do what? And put thy feet into her fetters. So fetters are like shackles, right? You have to put your feet into wisdom's fetters, meaning you can no longer go on your own way, right, according to your own mind, how you want to do things. You have to put your feet in subjection to how wisdom wants you to walk. Go ahead. And thy neck into her chain. Read. Bow down thy shoulder. Do what? Bow down thy shoulder. Go ahead. And bear her, and be not grieved with her bonds. What the Bible say? And be not grieved with her bonds. God said you cannot be grieved with her bonds, right? Bonds are like restrictions. So the thing about wisdom, the thing about discipline is that it comes with restrictions. It's certain things that you have to learn to abstain from and refrain from. You have to learn how to govern yourself according to God's commandments, right? The thing about it is it's for your good. It's to make you a better person, a better father, a better husband, a better mother, a better wife, a better sister, a better brother. And ultimately to get you to the kingdom, to make you worthy of salvation. It's for your good. But because you 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 not uh fully, you don't have the mindset to purge those crooked ways, you not facing the old man as you should in in an effort to destroy the old man and mortify those members, guess what? The bonds, the restrictions that come with wisdom and discipline, it will grieve you. Like, dang, why I got to come to class? Why I got to come to kill one-on-one? Why I got to call the officer? Why I got to talk to you? Why I got to st- Why I gotta get counsel? You understand? Why I got to do this? Why I got to do that? Ugh. Why I got? Why I can't smoke? Why I got to stop talking to them? You know what I'm saying? Why I got to be on time? God said, don't be grieved with the buns that come with wisdom. It's for your good. Read on. Come unto her with thy whole heart. You got to come with your whole heart. You can't come with the mindset like, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this Bible stuff out. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to see. Where, where, where my spirit leans to. Do I want to stay in the world? Do I want to smoke the weed? Do I want to play games? Or do I really believe this? You understand? You can't be like that. You got to come unto wisdom with your whole heart. Read. And keep her ways with all thy power. And you got to give a full effort. You understand? That's how wisdom will get to the level where it trusts your soul. It sees that you're giving your full effort to overcome that torment, you understand, of having to adjust to the discipline of God's commandments. You got to give that effort. A lot of us think we're going to be able to just cruise through the truth. I should just be able to just show up on the Sabbath. And that's that. I got my fringes on. I come to the Sabbath. Leave me alone. I don't want to hear nothing else. I shouldn't have to hear about coming in on fundraiser, uh, coming to a Thursday night class, man. What? Leave me, hey, leave me alone. <laughs> Wisdom said, don't be grieved with her buns. You're supposed to be giving all the power within you to convert yourself from that old you, from those crooked ways. But watch this. Jump up to verse 19. Verse 19. Go ahead. Come unto her as one that ploweth and soweth. And wait for her good fruits. So you got to come unto wisdom as somebody that's starting a garden, right? And it's a process. You got to plow the ground. You got to till it. And you got to sow the seed. And you understand that the next day you're not going to have a garden of cabbage. You're not going to have a garden of whatever it is you plant overnight. Anybody that plants a garden know it takes time to grow, to manifest that seed that manifests into something edible. You understand? That's how you got to come into this truth. Read. For thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her, Uh huh. but thou shalt eat of her fruits right soon. Meaning in due time you will obtain the fruits of the Spirit. Go ahead. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. But if you unlearn, right, if you fail to come to that realization of the need to purge that old man 
these things are unpleasant. Why why I can't know the scriptures like him? I mean, damn. Why I can't teach? Why I can't do this? Why I can't do that? Why I got to sit in the back? Why I got to wear regular clothes? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's unpleasant to the unlearned. Go ahead. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. So I want y'all to understand something, right? Because, of course, all of us, when we come into the truth, we don't have the understanding of the elders of the seasoned people, right? But this person that's without understanding is the person that doesn't understand the basic concept of repentance. You understand? Knowing that they must humble themselves and learn and receive instruction. They don't get that. They can't fathom that basic fundamental thing of repentance. You understand? So those people, they will not remain. Read on. She will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial. So instead of wisdom being able to build this person up and exalt this person, wisdom will be upon this person as a mighty stone of trial, as a, a weight that's weighing them down. Read. And he will cast her from him ere it be long. Right. Before it be long, before you know it, they're going to get that weight off. Like, man, the hell with this. I'm tired of the I got to say shalom every day. I got to pray three times a day. I got to read four chapters. Man, man I want to be free. You understand? For real. So these are, these are the type of spirits that end up being a can't get right spirits. Now, a lot of these people, they come and go, right? They don't take too much time. But some of these spirits are able to be like this for a while, all right? For a while. Now watch this. Go to First Peter chapter five. And I want to start at verse five. First Peter chapter five, verse five. First Peter chapter five and verse five. Go ahead. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Read. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. Be what? Be clothed with humility. So this is something common that you see commonly with the can't get right spirits. They struggle with the first portion because I want the point that I really want to get to is the latter portion of the scripture. But I wanted to start at verse five, the, the top part, because this is what you see. These are the initial struggles of a person that just can't get right. They have a problem with order being subject to anybody. You understand? They have a problem being subject to those that are over them or anybody in general being told what to do, right? Like, for example, the independent black woman, she coming to the truth. She she learns she is Israelite or whatever, but she doesn't, she doesn't understand that she must conform to God's concept of submission. You understand? She's without that understanding, even though that's basic fundamental understanding for a sister that comes into the truth. She never grasped that. She believes that she could still be a strong, independent woman. You understand? So that spirit is within her, so she never gets along with the sisters. She always argumentative. She's always distant. You understand? She does she when she does come around. It's issues, it's discord. You understand? It's because she not, those crooked ways, she's not purging herself from them. She's not receiving the discipline that the Lord is trying to impose upon her by the spirits that she's supposed to be subject to. You understand? A sister will tell her something and it's a problem. She's offended. She feels attacked. You understand? Same thing with the brothers. A brother coming to the truth with that mindset, I'm a grown ass man. Ain't no nigga gonna tell me to do this and do that and blah, blah, blah. Listen, that's completely contrary to what the Lord said. The Lord said you must come unto him as a little child. You understand, a newborn baby. If you don't understand that basic concept, you don't get that, you're not you're never going to grow because you think you're grown when you're in infant form, therefore you're not getting the milk to cause your bones to grow. You understand? 
these can't get right spirits, they never understand that concept of having to humble all the way down once you come into these doors. You have to be subject to those that came before you. They struggle with that. Go ahead. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So when you got that prideful spirit, when you too prideful to receive discipline, to take correction, to allow somebody to pour into you instruction and order, right? God will resist you. Meaning what? You'll watch classes. You'll read. But for some reason, stuff not clicking like it should. You're not, you're not able to teach like you should, like that person that came in a couple of months after you. They're surpassing you. You understand? That's because God is resisting you because you're prideful. You understand? But he gives grace to the humble. If you have a humble spirit, watch this, verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. The mighty hand of God are the people that he set up to instruct, to feed the flock, the evangelists, the apostles, the teachers, the prophets. You understand? What was the, uh, the pinky? Uh, I forgot. But it's five, it's five levels of, of the ministry, right? Figures that the Lord uses within the ministry in order to feed the flock. God said we must humble ourselves under them. Read. That he may exalt you in due time. Because if you do that in due time, you'll be exalted. Like we read in Sirach 6, if you come unto her as one that ploweth and soweth, you know it's going to take time for that seed to be cultivated, get nourished, and then it will sprout up. If you come unto wisdom with that mindset, you won't have no problem being watered. You understand? By those that have the wisdom to water you, you will take that correction. You will take the classes with meekness. You will take full accountability for your ignorance and desire to be taught how to improve yourself. You will desire discipline. When you do that, the Lord will exalt you in due time. Wisdom will, will trust your soul. Wisdom will take you to the next level. All right? Now go to Sirach 32, verse 17. So this is what happens with the can't get right spirits. These are the type of tendencies that they have. Read that. Sirach chapter 32 and verse 17. Go ahead. A sinful man will not be reproved. A sinful man will not be corrected. He will not be able to, to take somebody showing him his faults. Read. But findeth an excuse according to his will. They always going to find an excuse. They always going to come up with a reason why they not able to do this, why they not able to do that, why they didn't do this, why they, do, why they didn't do that. And more often than not, those excuses are in the form of other people. Hold that. Go to Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 9. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 9. Go ahead. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. So this is what we want. You understand? We want to get to this level where the Lord is dealing with us in this manner. Go ahead. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke. Right. So in order to get to that level with the Lord, there's an if, there's a stipulation. We must do these things. Read on. The putting forth of the finger. We must stop the putting forth of the finger. We must stop playing the blame game. The thing about the can't get right spirits, they master that. Instead of mastering humility and the desire of discipline, they learn how to deflect. They learn how to blame their problems and issues on others. And mainly, more often than not, they point it at the mighty hand of God, the leadership. You understand? For real. More often than not, it's the leadership fault. You ain't teaching right. You, you, you disrespectful. You this, you that. You ain't right. You ain't that. It's always... The leadership fault. You understand? Well, I ain't going to say always, but that's common amongst those type of spirits. Or they like to blame their spouse. 
You understand? They like to blame their peers. Uh, my officer over me, he don't call me. My POC sister, she don't, she don't hit me up. It's always somebody else's fault why you're not able to get yourself together. You understand? It's always the putting forth of the finger, using other people as an excuse for you not applying the scriptures that you're being taught. Go back to Sirach 32. God said that's what a sinful man would do. Read verse 18. Sirach chapter 32 and verse 18. Go ahead. A man of counsel will be considerate. A man of counsel, a man that understands that he should desire discipline, that he should desire to receive instruction from those that came before him. You understand? That's able to water him as he grows from the roots, right? That person, he'll be considerate. He'll be able to be like, damn, yeah, I need to do better with this. I need to stop doing this. I need to do more of this. You understand? I shouldn't be doing it. Thank you for acknowledging that. Right? A man of counsel will be considerate. Read on. But a strange and proud man. But a strange and proud man, meaning an arrogant weirdo. You come into this truth thinking you know everything. When it's all the leaders before you were students first. It took them years to obtain a level of wisdom to be able to lead a congregation. But you come in and you think that you don't need to be told anything by them. You know more than them, or you know just as much as them. That is an arrogant, weird, that's crazy. That's dumb. But a strange and proud man, read. Is not daunted with fear. Uh huh. Even when of himself he have done without counsel. So, it, in other words, it's nothing that would stop a strange and proud man from doing whatever the hell he wants to do. All right, watch this. Go to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15, about this strange and proud man. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 15. Read. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. The way of a fool is right in his own You can't tell him nothing. God said that's the way of a, a fool. So just imagine this is you. You're blind to the fact that you are what God says is a fool, but you think you think you're the wisest person in the room. You wise enough to not be able to, to not have to glean any wisdom from anybody else. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Go ahead. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. But he that listens to counsel, he that receives discipline is wise. Go to chapter 14. Chapter 14, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 16. Read. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil. When something is brought to a wise man's attention, be like, oh, yeah, I got to take here. I can't be doing this. I got to stop that. You right. He will fear and depart from evil. Go ahead. But the fool rageth and is confident. You try to address something to a fool, a strange and proud man, and he go, he get mad. Hey, bro, so what you saying? What you trying to say? Da, 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 da. I don't need to do that. I don't need to. I don't need to. Da, 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 da. What the hell, bro? That, that's a strange and proud man. God said the fool rages. You can't tell a fool nothing. He confident that he got all the answers himself. She confident that she got all the answers herself. You understand that's a strange and proud man. They're not going to be done with fear. All right, watch this. Go to Proverbs 15, verse 32. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, and verse 32. Go ahead. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. So God is saying when you got that spirit to where can't nobody tell you nothing, you're, you ain't hurting nobody but yourself. You despise your own soul. That instruction is coming your way to lift you up to build you up, to mold you in the truth so wisdom can trust your soul, show you her secrets, take you to the next level. But you don't want to listen, you hard-headed. You got it figured out already. You despise your own soul. You, you your own worst enemy. Read. But he that heareth reproof, get it understanding. But if you listen 
to what the the your the men, the women, your peers, your elders, your leadership, the people around you that's trying to help you, that's trying to exercise love according to the Bible. If you hear them out, I guarantee you, you'll you'll get understanding. You'll grow. You'll start to realize how to examine yourself, how to apply the scriptures, how to truly die daily, how to mortify those members, how to overcome those crooked ways. All right? From there, go to Sirach chapter 4. Sirach chapter 4, verse 26. This is another tendency of the can't get right spirits. Read that. The book of Sirach chapter 4 and verse 26. Read. Be not ashamed to confess thy sins. So God said, don't be ashamed to confess your sins. Now, I know we read that a lot, maybe in the context of you having to, to tell a human being, right, what which, which you're dealing with. But this is going in a prayer as well. A lot of us, ironically, when we fall into sin, when we know we're doing bad, that's when we don't want to pray. <laughs> because of the shame, right? So a lot of the can't-get-right spirits, they have this struggle. You understand? Because they're right in their own eyes. They don't even want to let the Lord know that they're a damn fool. They too prideful to acknowledge that to the Lord. They're ashamed to confess their sins to the Lord. Read. And force not the course of the river. Because if you are unable to confess your sins even to the Lord, then that's like trying to stop the current of a river. Can you jump in a river and change the course in which the currents are going? Hell no. They're like, they're like basically saying you can, you can be dumped in the middle of the river and you do this and all the boats will turn around in the direction that, that you push the water. You can't do that. You understand? That's not possible. So what is this scripture telling you? If you're not, if you're too prideful to confess your sins, to acknowledge that you don't know a damn thing and you need discipline, you will never, ever grow. You will never make any progress. You understand? You will not make prog- You will not make the progress that you should. It's levels to this, right? Because there's some people that never make it anywhere. You understand? But you might make it to a soldier. You might make it to the officer 10 level. And then you find yourself stuck. Why? Because of pride, right? The person that was a brother with you, that's a soldier with you, now he a 50. Now he over the camp. Now he doing the classes. And it's like, he don't know enough for me to listen to him and call him for counsel and listen and watch his classes and really examine myself and really change. He I, he been in this long as me. When that spirit come up on you, you understand. You wonder why you stand in that ring four, five, six years. It's because of you. You trying to force the course of the river. You understand. You better humble your ass down. It's obviously a spiritual reason behind why these people are surpassing you. You understand? You have to humble down and realize it's things within you that you need to purge, that you need to change. You got to bring that out so you can receive that discipline and get that help and you can grow and wisdom will take you to the next level. Can't get right spirits? They don't want to do that. Their pride won't allow them to. All right, from there, go to Proverbs chapter 5, verse 22. The book of Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 22. Read. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holding with the cords of his sins. So it ain't no point of playing a blame game. It's leadership. They're not building me up. Uh, My counselor don't be answering the phone. Uh, The brothers, when I come around, they don't salute me. Uh, the sisters, they all, they don't ever respond to my messages on Telegram. Uh, da, 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 you just, you know what I'm saying? Always hearing, listen, God said it's your own iniquities holding you back. That's what God said. It ain't nothing you holding, holding you back but your damn self, your own iniquities. 
All right, watch this. Go to Tobit chapter 12, verse 10. That's why I will behoove you to confess. Humble down. I don't know nothing. I've been tripping. I've been dealing with pride. You understand? I haven't been doing my due diligence and seeking counsel, right? Being willing to receive the discipline, regardless of the age of the person offering it to me or how long they've been in the truth or whatever the case may be. I'm, I've been dealing with pride. I've been thinking that I'm right in my own eyes when obviously the Lord is trying to show me different. Lord, I acknowledge, which I, 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 I feel like I'm coming to the realization that I, I, I get it. I get why I've been going, not making any progress, why I've been stagnant, why I haven't made it to the level where my other peers have. I get it now. You understand? It would behoove you to do that. But pride, I'm telling you, you would, it would, you would convince yourself is something else. It's some other reason why these things are happening. I'm telling you, Tobit chapter 12, verse 10. The book of Tobit chapter 12 and verse 10. Go ahead. But they that sin are enemies to their own life. You see that? When you sin and you don't confess your sins, you're not willing to receive the discipline to overcome your sins. You your own worst enemy. But the thing about these spirits, watch this. Go to Galatians 4, verse 16. This is the thing about spirits like this. The irony. All right, read what you got. The book of Galatians chapter 4 and verse 16. Read. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? You got to think of why would Paul even ask that? Why would he come to a position in which he has to pose that question? Because these type of spirits are always the most defensive spirits. When you come to them and you say, bro, you need to do this, you need, bro, you, you know what I'm saying? You bring out the classes, it's, you, you trying to, you know what I'm saying, message. And instead of them receiving it with humility, they offend it. They take it personal. They feel attacked. Paul said, am I your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. God said, them that sin are enemies to their own life. You your own worst enemy, but you trying to make your brothers and sisters out to be the enemy. You trying to make leadership out to be the enemy. No, it's you. <laughs> you understand? When you look in a mirror, that's when you're behind enemy lines. It's not when you come to the school. It's not when you come to the council table. It's not when you pick up the phone and talk to the officer. You understand? It's when you're looking in, in the mirror. Watch this. Go to 2 Ezra chapter 16 and verse 76. 2 Ezra chapter 16 and verse 76. Go ahead. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts. Saith the Lord God. So God is the guide of them that keep his commandments and precepts. Read. Let not your sins weigh you down. So he instructs us, do not let your sins weigh you down. Right? Because when you do that, you force in the course of a, or the river, you ain't going to go nowhere. <laughs> you understand? You're not going to make no progress. Read. And let not your iniquities lift up themselves. So the more prideful you are, the less you're receptive to counsel, the less you desire counsel, desire discipline, the more you, you're right in your own eyes, the more lifted up your iniquities get. Not your soul, not you being taken to the next level by wisdom, your iniquities get taken to the next level. You understand? <laughs> that's scary. That's, that's why you got these can't get right spirit. This is what's taking place. Their iniquities are lifting up themselves. Read on. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins. They're caught up in their sins. They're holding with the cords of their sins. They cannot move forward in the spirit. God said, woe unto them. Go ahead. And covered with their iniquities. Read. Like as a field is Notice covered. Notice it doesn't say it's covered with their haters in the congregation. <laughs> covered with their leadership that doesn't like them. C 
covered with their their out the spirit wife, covered with their out the spirit husband. It says they are covered with their iniquities. Go ahead. Like as a field is covered over with bushes, and the path thereof covered with thorns, uh -huh. that no man may travel through. You will get to the point where nobody will be able to help you. You understand? You will get to the point where it's, it's no way that you will come out of that predicament. You will become trapped in your sin. You understand? And we're going we gonna to circle back around to that point later. But go to James chapter 1, verse 21. James chapter 1, verse 21. The book of James chapter 1 and verse 21. Go ahead. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness of and superfluity. So the Bible says, right, with the elder James, he tells us, lay apart all filthiness. This is going into your crooked ways. All of us, when we come into this truth, have filthiness attached to us that we love, that we embrace, right? In order to even lay it apart, you got to acknowledge that it's filth. You want to come into the truth like you just, hold that, give me Proverbs 20, I believe it's verse 9. Proverbs 20 and verse 9. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 9. Go ahead. Who can say, I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. So you want to come into the truth like you just, you holy, you you pure, you got it. You understand? God said nobody can say that, right? So you have to have a level of consciousness to, to understand and confess and acknowledge I'm dealing with filthiness in order to get to the point where you lay it apart from you. <laughs> you understand? You have to lay apart that filthiness that you've acknowledged. Go back. Read it again. The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 21. Read. Well, for lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Right. Superfluity of naughtiness is an unnecessary amount, right? The baggage that you come into the truth with. The Lord says, lay aside that baggage. Go ahead. And receive with meekness. Do what? And receive with meekness. You see how heavy that word is? Receive. Remember the second scripture we read. Because we read about you, you got to be tormented with the discipline of wisdom. Right? That word torment is the operative word. Because it doesn't feel good to a soul that's just coming out of a, a life of free to do wickedness. Yeah, <laughs> You understand? It doesn't feel good to now have to undergo all these restrictions and have to discontinue all of the things that pleased you your whole life. It doesn't feel good. It feels like torment. But God said, if you fear him, you will receive that discipline. And this is how you must receive it. Read that. And receive with meekness. With what? With meekness. With meekness, meaning you submit. You put your feet into her fetters. You put your neck under that yoke. You understand? You bow down your shoulder. You submit to the fact that you must be cleansed. You must be changed. And that's going to require you to get told about yourself. <laughs> you understand? You got to receive with meekness the what? The engrafted word. The Bible, the word of God, which is profitable for instruction and correction. You understand? Read. Which is able to save your soul. Guess what? That's able to get you right. The Bible is able to get you right, but you must receive it with meekness. Read on. Verse 22. But be ye doers of the word. Be what? But be ye doers of the word. Of the word. So when you get the counsel, when you get the instruction, you must apply what you're being taught. Read. And not hearers only. And not what? And not hearers only. Read. Deceiving your own selves. Because you'll see some of these spirits, they'll be amongst us for a while. And while they're amongst us, they accumulate the knowledge of precepts. They're able to raise their hand and answer questions in a circle. Right? But it's still something wrong with their spirit. 
the Lord has not taken their, he has not exalted their spirit, although they've memorized precepts. You understand? You are doing nothing but deceiving yourself. Memorizing precepts does not, uh, does not equate to growth. You must be a doer of the word. You understand? But this is another tendency of the can't get right spirits. Hypocrisy. You understand? Watch this. Read on. For if any be a doer of the word. No. Excuse me. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer. Meaning you come to class. You listening right now. But you're not a doer. Go ahead. He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. You are like to a man that's behold, that's looking at himself in the mirror. But uh, watch this. Go to hold that. Go to Second Corinthians chapter three, and read verse eighteen. I'm gonna show y'all something heavy about examination. A lot of us go about it the wrong way or with the wrong mindset. Watch this. Read that. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse eighteen. Read. But we all. With open face, beholding as in a glass. As in a glass. What are we beholding in that glass? Read. The glory of the Lord. The what? The glory of the Lord. So here's the thing. Because a lot of us, we try to measure ourselves by our peers, by the people that we see. You understand? We try to measure our growth according to the brother next to us, the sister next to us. You understand? That's how you examine. You looking in the mirror, you like, okay, I don't got what she got on her face. You know what I'm figuratively speaking, right? When you look into the mirror, you're supposed to see Christ. That's supposed to be your standard because that is the spirit within you or that's trying to dwell within you. You understand? A lot of us don't hold ourselves to that standard. That's why we don't push ourselves to grow as we should. That's why we're stagnant, and we it seems like we become content with remaining at a lower state in this truth and not making progress because you're not holding yourself to the standard of Christ. Ephesians said we must all come to the measure and stature of Christ. <laughs> you understand? We got to strive. We got to press towards that mark. A lot of us not doing that. We're not going about examination the proper way, right? So go back to James chapter 1. Read that verse again. The book of James chapter 1 and verse 25. Read 23. Excuse me, verse 23. Read. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Right. So you looking in the Bible, you understand, and you're seeing all of these scriptures that warrant perfection, that warrants you to become like Christ, right? So when you do that, all of the things that you looking in the Bible and you able to look back at yourself in that glass and see like, oh, I like this, I like that, I like this. You understand? So with that being said, right, let, just for example, figuratively speaking, the Bible is the mirror, right? So you looking in the mirror and you see, I don't know, uh, a, a booger hanging out the left nostril. So once you leave from the mirror, you're going to get a Kleenex or a tissue, or you supposed to, because you just saw through the glass in the glass in the mirror, which would be the Bible, you just saw that spiritual booger. You just heard that precept that you know you're not applying. So you're supposed to leave that mirror and go get a Kleenex to get the damn booger. But instead, this is what happens. Read. For he beholdeth himself. So you see it, you see the booger. Read. And goeth his way. And then you you turn away from the mirror. Go ahead. And straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. You forgot you had a booger hanging at the, at the damn nose. So then you wonder why you going up to brothers and sisters and they looking at you crazy. They telling, damn, bro, you got a book. Now you offended. But I ain't got no damn book on my face. You got a book. But you got some good. You see what I'm saying? It's the can't get right spirits. They don't apply. They learn. They hear. They know. 
They have enough sense to comprehend, oh, yeah, that's a booger right there. But as soon as they walk away from the Bible, as soon as class go off, they don't go and get the instruments, the, the spiritual instruments that it takes to actually remove the booger, and they forgot that it's there. You understand? They walk around wearing their flaws on their face instead of doing what it takes to remove them. You understand? I'm telling you. Watch this. Go to Sirach 32. Sirach 32, verse 15. The book of Sirach, chapter 32, and verse 15. Read. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith. Who that? He that what? He that seeketh the law. In order for you to seek the law, think about it. Matter of fact, hold that. Give me second interest. I believe it's chapter 16 and verse 50, I want to say. Read that. The, yeah. book, the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 16 and verse 50. Read. So shall righteousness hate iniquity uh -huh. when she decketh herself and shall accuse her to her face. Read. When he cometh, that shall defend him. That so dilet when he cometh, which is the Lord, the Lord is coming to defend him that what? That diligently... Searcheth out every sin upon earth. That's the spirit that we're supposed to have. You diligently seeking out every single sin, every single imperfection, so you can press toward that mark and come to the fullness of the stature of Christ. That's the spirit that you're supposed to have. So now go back to Sirach 32, read that verse again. The book of Sirach, chapter 32 and verse 15. Read. He that seeketh the law shall be. So you seeking the law because you know the law is perfect, converting the soul. The law has the power to purge those sins from you and make you perfect. So he that seeketh the law shall be what? Shall be filled therewith. You're going to be filled with the spirit. And that's going to reflect within you that people going to see it people going to notice the lord will exalt you you understand the lord will promote you to honor you won't struggle with the things you've been struggling with no more you will grow satan will have to attack from different angles now right read on but the hypocrite but the what but the hypocrite but the hearer and not the doer the one that he forget that he got sin on his face and he was supposed to go get a towel but he left and walked outside. The hypocrite shall what? Will be offended thereat. The hypocrite going to be what? Will be offended thereat. So once you show that hypocrite the law, he's going to be offended. The thing is, in his mind, it's you. <laughs> you understand? You're attacking him. You're the problem. But he's really just mad at the law because he fails to have the courage to apply it, to fight, to apply it to his life. You understand? To go through that torment of discipline, to earn that level of trust with wisdom, to grow, to be taken to the next level. He lacks the courage to do what it takes to get there. So he's offended at the fact that others have fought that fight and made their progress, which Remember, the scriptures say the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. He doesn't want to accept the fact that he's not doing what others like himself have been able to do. He doesn't want to accept that. He's offended that it wasn't as much of a challenge for them as it is for him. They overcame it. He didn't yet. So he don't like that. But in his mind, he's convincing himself that it now is you. You don't like me. You after me. You hating on me. You understand? I'm telling you, that's the danger of that hypocritical spirit. That's why those spirits can't get right. All right, from there, go to Sirach 21, verse 6. So what, what do we go over with, the, with those spirits, right? They prideful. You understand? They don't seek counsel. They think they know everything, and they're hypocritical. They will learn all the scriptures. You understand? But you will not see that reflected in their actions. All right? These are the spirits that can't get right. 
All right, read what you got. The book of Sirach, chapter 21 and verse 6. Oh, and I forgot. They make excuses and they love to point the finger. All right, but read that. He that hateth to be reproved. He that what? He that hateth to be reproved. He that does not desire your discipline. He don't want nobody telling him nothing. He's right in his own eyes. He rages and is confident that he needeth not to hear rebuke. <laughs> you understand? He that hated to be repro reproved is what? Is in the way of sinners. Now jump down to verse 10 to see the way of sinners. Verse 10. The way of sinners is made plain with stone. It seems like it's a, that's the easy way to go. Read. But at the end thereof is the pit of hell. That's the way of sinners. Right? Th think about it. The, the way of sinners, that means that they don't want to go through the torment of discipline. They make excuses. So they don't they don't go down the path that other go that others go through to strive for perfection. You understand? So it's made plain with stones, meaning what? They could come to the Sabbath week after week after week, but they not on time for camp like others. Right? They're not staying and doing their cleaning duties like others. They're not cleaving to the leadership to gain wisdom like others. Right? In their mind, oh, yeah, this, yeah, fringes, Sabbath, I'm in there. Kingdom, crown me. You understand? But whole time, they got secret sins that they're not, they not confessing. You understand? They got issues, they house not in order. Right? All type of hell breaking loose in their life. But they don't have to strive like you striving. It seems as if, damn, I'm doing all this, and that's the effort he giving, and we both getting the kingdom? Yeah, that way of sinners is made plain with stones, but the end thereof is the pit of hell. You understand? Trust me. And it, the Lord going to turn the heat up, and them spirits that's like that is going to manifest that they wasn't in this truth for real. They was in the way of sinners, right? Because they hate to be reproved. Can't nobody tell them nothing. Jump back up to verse 6. Verse 6. Uh-huh. He that hated to be reproved is in the way of sinners. Deceiving yourselves. you just a hearer, not a doer. You think you're going to get to the kingdom like that with that prideful spirit. You in the way of sinners. The end thereof is the pit of hell. But watch this. But he that feareth the Lord, but he that feareth the Lord, will repent from his heart. Will be converted. You understand? So if you that can't get right, brother or sister, meaning since you've been in the truth, the one, the two, the three, the four, the five years you've been in the truth, and you're you've been surpassed, you haven't got the test. You understand? Every time you come around these issues, guess what? If you receive this word with meekness, it's able to save your soul. What club was that at? <laughs> that was admit that uh, a lot of people don't even realize they I've called her, she hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. But the Zulu nation, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You'll leave me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. That's what y'all do. Didn't have to class yet. I knew what you were talking about. I just don't want to be caught out there. The hell is this? Get on my damn nerves. So read that again, 30. If you receive this word with meekness and acknowledge that you're the can't get right person, guess what? You can be healed. You understand? The Lord can deal with you and pull you out of that slump, right? That's simply the solution. Now watch this. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 4. You know, that as people that have experience, right? We, we should know this by now, but just in case, in this truth, you can never count anybody out. Your discernment will tell you 
yeah that's that's a walking red flag right there if such and such happens i will not be surprised however you can't judge nothing before the time you understand watch this read that ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 4 go ahead for to him that is joined to all the living there is hope so as long as you alive as long as the lord keeping you alive obviously the lord has some type of hope mercy plant something in store for you to keep your ass alive so as long as you're alive there is what there is hope there's hope that you can change that you can get out of that slump that you can stop being that brother that always got issues every time your name come up is drama every time your name come up is judgment it's an incident report you understand Listen, that you have hope to become the opposite. There is hope that you can become a mighty man in his truth. You could be just like the leaders that you see pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. You understand? It's hope as long as you're alive. Read. For a living dog. A what? A living dog. A living dog, meaning somebody who ain't right, but he's still alive, is what? It's better than a dead lion. So guess what? You better you better meditate on that thing. Is you're not doomed if you're still alive. There's hope for you. All right? But watch this. Go to Second Ezra chapter 14. 2nd Ezra 14, start at 13. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 14, and verse 13. Read. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. So, in this in particular for the men, right? Set your house in order. Because I mentioned, a lot of us will play the blame game. It's my wife. She that woman. She da-da-da. You know, just for an example, right? As a man of God, he expects you through the hearing and applying of his word to be able to set your house in order, to take authority over your house and order it according to righteousness. You understand that step one, set your house in order. Go ahead. And reprove thy people. And then you'll be able to teach. Wisdom will take you to the next level, to where you have the understanding to be able to not just learn the precepts, but it Expound on the precepts, right? To feed the flock, to convert souls to repentance. Read. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. Right. You'll be able to counsel. Go ahead. And now renounce corruption. So in the, in the following verses, because set thine, set thine house in order, you may take that and you may think, oh, that just means that I have to bring things to the appearance as if, my household is in order with the Lord, right? But in the next verses, it's going to expound on what it takes for you to do within to actually set your house in order. Watch this. Read. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. Do what? Let go from thee mortal thoughts. Those crooked ways. The superfluity of naughtiness. You have to let go. You have to lay it apart. Go ahead. Cast away the burdens of man. Cast away the burdens of man. Right, the carnal things that's holding you back, the cause of your sins. Read. Put off now the weak nature. Put off now the what? The weak nature. You know what the weak nature is? Always being offended. Always feeling like you're being attacked. Always playing a victim. Always pointing the finger and playing the blame game. Never able to take accountability. You understand? That is a weak nature. That is a mama's boy mentality. You understand? You have to put that off. You have to be able to take admonition. You understand? Scriptures say, if what did it say? Uh, if your neighbor smites you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. If you get that righteous rebuke, it might be a little harsh. But guess what? You're supposed to receive that. Well, I needed that. Here, give me some more. You understand? Because you know that you need the filthiness slapped out of you. You understand? But the weak nature, you ain't trying to, you ain't trying to get that, you ain't trying to let the righteous smite you. You know what I'm saying? 
You ain't trying to go through that. You ain't trying to go through that torment of discipline. God said you must put off the weak nature. You have to do that. All right, read on. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Read. And hasty to flee from these times. Now watch this. Go to Limitations chapter 3. Limitations chapter 3, read verse 39. The book of Limitations, chapter 3 and verse 39. Go ahead. Well, forth doth a living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins. Right. So, hold on. Read that verse again. Well, forth doth a living man complain. A well, forth doth a living man. A what? A living man. So, remember we just read in Ecclesiastes. As long as you're joined unto the living, there is hope. You can become like Christ. You understand? So why would a living man complain? For what? A man for the punishment of his sins. So now this this is the thing about this, y'all. The punishment of his sins will be the lack of spiritual growth, household out of order, hell in his personal life, you understand all type of things going wrong, constantly getting rebuked by leadership, right? All those are forms of punishments for sins, per se. But a man with pride that's not meek, that's not humble to understand that, he is going to complain, not in the consciousness and the fact that it's punishment for his sins. He's going to complain like, Man, I came to this truth and everything going wrong. I lost this. I'm losing this. My my family hate me. I da -da -da. I, every time I come around, I'm getting rebuked. I da -da -da. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Why would a live a living man that sees other people that that has been able to overcome these things? Why would he have the audacity? Audacity, audacity, audacity to open his mouth and complain? That's because his mind ain't right. He not fully comprehending. Watch this. Go to Job 31 and 3. We're going to go right back to the Lamentations. But there is a, a deception, right? Uh, 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 with the, what is it saying? Right? An exquisite subtlety, right? That because you come into the truth, meaning because you put fringes on and you walk into... 1802 Highway 161, you walk into a school that all of your problems are supposed to go away. You understand? That you no longer have to suffer any consequences for the things that you're failing to apply. Right? Watch this. Read that verse. The book of Job chapter 31 and verse 3. Read. It's not destruction to the wicked. And a strange punishment to a the what? a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity. So don't get it twisted, right? We understand that there there are trials and tribulations for the righteous. You would you can be doing what you're supposed to do and lose your job, your wife bug out. You understand? Job is the prime example of that. But don't be ignorant to the fact that it could very well be the Lord. Trying to get your attention. Nigga, you ain't right. That's why you taking all these damn L's. You understand? Never lose consciousness of that fact. That could always very well be the case. That's why you should always be examining yourself. Period. You understand? Now go back to Lamentations chapter 3. Read 39 again. The book of Lamentations chapter 3 verse 39. Uh-huh. Well, for doth a living man complain. A man for the punishment of his sins. So you going through it, the Lord jacking you up, but you still alive. Nigga, you could be dead. <laughs> you understand? You could be gone. You could be vapor. You could be smoke. You could be a ghost. But the Lord has you alive to be able to remain in strife. Bars. Looking at me. So what, what you complaining for? That's showing that your spirit not right. This is what you ought to do. Read the next verse. Let us search and try our way. And that's what I'm telling you. This, this is the remedy for you can't get right spirits. But this is 
this is the hardest thing for you to do, to face yourself. You understand? To come to grips with the fact you are your own worst enemy. But that's the first step of the remedy. Damn, that was another boy. I didn't even mean to do that. All right, but anyway, go to Psalms 119, verse 59. Psalms chapter 119, verse 59. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 59. Go ahead. I thought on my way. I did what? I thought on my way. So in context, this is King David, right? Remember, King David would, had a period where he was on demon time. <laughs> you understand? He was on real demon time. What, what was his remedy? What did he do? I thought on my ways. I thought on my ways. Read. And turned my feet unto thy testimonies. And then I changed. I got my mind right. I put myself into subjection unto God's testimonies. I started to desire discipline. <laughs> you understand? And that was able to do what? Save my soul. That was able to get me back on the right track. But that's the first. You can't skip the step of thinking on your ways and acknowledging you are the main one holding you back. It's you. That step has to take place. Stop pointing the finger. It's three fingers pointing right back at your head. Two or three witnesses. <laughs> All right, put it from there. First Peter chapter two. First Peter two verse one. The book of First Peter chapter two and verse one. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. Doing what? Laying aside all malice. So James said, laying aside uh the superfluity of naughtiness. So what Peter is doing, he's putting labels. You understand? He's naming the different elements of naughtiness and filthiness that you must lay aside instead of generalizing it. He says, lay aside what? Laying aside all malice. Malice is evil intent, ill will towards your neighbor. We come into this truth, and you was like that in the world. You was always looking for a way to one-up a nigga. You know what I'm saying? To get one-up on a sister, right? You have to lay, you can't bring that spirit in here. You understand? That's a crooked way that you have to allow the torment of discipline to purge from you. You have to lay that aside. Go ahead. And all gal. And all gal, meaning deceit. A lot of us think we can deceive our way into rank. Deceive our way into having the respect, the love of the congregation. It doesn't work that way. You have to lay that aside. You might have been able to do that in your fraternity. Your ass can't do that in this truth. You got to lay that aside. Go ahead. And hypocrisy. And what? And hypocrisy. Because we saw that the danger of the hypocritical spirit. You understand? Walk around, damn, all type of boogers and snot. And when you was in them, you knew you were supposed to go grab a damn towel, tissue, Q tip, all that, tweezers. You left the mirror and didn't grab nothing. You understand? That's a dangerous spirit. We got to lay that aside. We got to stop being hearers only and start doing what we learning. Go ahead. And envies. And what? And envies. And envies. Why would you envy a person? That goes back to what I was saying. Right? They're, they're like you. Right? They're a man like you. They're a woman like you. Right? Around the same age. Had to face the same challenges in this truth. But somehow they've made it to that next level. They've earned the trust of wisdom. Wisdom has started to show them secrets and promote them to honor. Meanwhile, you're still at level one or level two. You understand? So instead of seeing that and being inspired, you see that and you envy. You can't you can't be like that. <laughs> you understand? That just like when you was in the world, you was on the team, you was good at basketball, but your friend 
same age, same class. He came on the team and he was great at basketball. And that's just what it was. But instead of you working harder and going around him to learn the different ways he practiced and pushing yourself, you in, man. Like, that nigga gonna get hurt doing all that dunking. Watch. <laughs> listen, listen. I'm telling you, because brothers at brothers and sisters that had that spirit, they'll be waiting on a brother downfall instead of just following those steps to get exalted to that same level. You got to lay aside that envious spirit. Go ahead. And all evil speaking. And what? And all evil speaking. You know what's crazy about this? Because that's a tendency that I, that I left out. I meant to get it, but I didn't. Tennessee that can't get right spirits, they don't have any problems murmuring against leadership. You understand? <laughs> they don't have any problems speaking evil of the brethren, sisters, period, but especially the mighty hand of God, the people that he set up over the congregation, right? Because you didn't, you didn't have no issue doing that when you was in the world. You were in the cubicles, you were talking bad about your boss. Meanwhile, he's your boss. He tells you what to do. He has a bigger salary. You understand? He Whatever he did got him in a position where he's over you in the company, but you spend all day talking bad about that, about that boss. You bring that same spirit up in here. Instead of, this, this is the trip part about the evil speaking, right? You will have brothers and sisters murmur about leadership with no problem. Have you ever heard anybody murmur about themselves? Me and like, let's let's say, think about it, right? Cause we know we not without sin. We know we got issues. A like, have you ever looked at, looked at Officer David and been like, "Hey, Officer David, Soldier like him, he be, he ain't right. He be doing, he be doing it. He be, you know what I'm saying? He inconsiderate. He, he rude." When have you ever heard somebody do that? Have somebody ever looked you in the face and spoke evil of they self? But they don't got no problem looking you in the face and speaking evil of who the Lord put over the congregation. We got to we got to be able to look at that and not that's filth. That's me. That's the filthiness that I deal with. That I got to lay apart from me. That's step one, guys. You understand? You got to lay that aside. For real. That is, I'm telling you, that is a demon. Never look. You never sat down with your brother, your, your group of friends, and just got to going in on yourself. Well, y'all know. Uh, y'all know Captain Emmanuel. He be... Psh- he be at the house doing this, doing that. He ain't really, he be, did it. you ain't never heard nobody do that. But you can't, I bet you most of us can't say that we ain't never heard a brother or sister open their mouth in a negative manner concerning leadership. We got to lay that aside, y'all. Dang you. Read on. As newborn babes. As what? As newborn babes. So you lay that aside because the Lord is trying to make you a new creature. And he doesn't make you a new adult. You understand? You have to start from the ground. Right? You're a seed. Somebody, when you woke up to this truth, you were a seed that was planted. You understand? So you got to come unto wisdom as her that ploweth. And so if you have to understand it's a process before that seed can become a fruitful tree. You understand? So you are at just like a seed that's in the ground that's just now getting its roots. That's you and its truth, right? A newborn babe. As newborn babes doing what? Desire the sincere milk. Desire the sincere milk. Of the what? Of the word. Of the word. What is the milk of the word? The laws of God. What do the laws do? Torment you. (laughs) It's bonds. It's restrictions. Thou shalt not. You understand? You can't murmur. You can't envy. You understand? You can't be deceitful. 
You can't do the things you used to do in the world to advance. That's the opposite of what's going to happen to you if you do that in this truth. You have to, re you got to, what, what's a baby's attitude towards milk? They cry for it. They would scream to the top of the, the top of their lungs for hours. You'd be like, damn, how they voice box still exists? They would scream to the top of their lungs for hours for that milk. Ask yourself, are you that way when it comes to the reception of instruction and correction? Out of the word of God, the milk. Are you that desirous of it? Or you're more desirous of vainglory, of brothers and sisters liking you, having an image in the congregation. You, you got to ask yourself, how desirous am I of discipline, of the laws of God? Have, you, have I ever even read the laws? <laughs> Have I, have I just really skimmed through the first five books and really gave my mind to learn the laws and make sure I'm in full compliance? Have I ever even done that? You understand? That's how we must be in order to do what? Read on. That ye may grow thereby. That you may what? That ye may grow thereby. See, this is the thing about the spirit, right? The spirit doesn't just acknowledge the issues the spirit also gives solutions. It's plain. Humble yourself. Desire discipline. You understand? Examine yourself. Acknowledge your transgressions. Apply what you're learning that she may grow thereby. That's how you're going to grow. That's how you're going to be exalted. That's how wisdom going to trust you and take you to the next level. It's plain. <laughs> it's right there. Can it get any more plain than that? All right. Colossians 1 verse 9. Because I know a lot of people, a lot of people think leadership got it out for them. A lot of brothers, I ain't going to say a lot of brothers. There are some brothers that think I have a personal vendetta against them. There's some sisters that think some other sisters got some personal vendettas against them. I'm here to let you know, from the perspective of leadership, honest to God truth, this is how I feel about you. This is what I do in regards to you. Read what you got. The book of Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Read. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Do not what? Do not cease to pray for you. So you thinking, I'm sneak this you right now. I don't like, I get around other leaders and throw you under the bus or something. You, I don't know what the hell you might have in your mind. Yeah, he the one giving me the tools on my evaluation. He the one. Da, da, da. Meanwhile, what, what, what I'm doing back at the ranch? Do not <laughs> cease to pray for you. I'll tell you, bro. That's why you got to lay aside evil speakings. More often than not, the person that's hardest on you, that's always trying to get on you to encourage you to do better about yourself, it's probably the main one sending them up for you at night. Lord, please get that brother to overcome that spirit of lust, that spirit of slothfulness. You understand? Get a brother the, the zeal to learn, to grow. Please. You understand? Little do you know. Read on. And to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So we pray that you become filled with the desire, desire of his will. Why? Because it, that's where it starts. It's not, it's, you know how it said the spirit descended on Christ like a dove. Don't think that that's, you going to come in here and just, wisdom just going, oh. No, Jesus Christ did no sin, and he was 30 when that took place. How you spent 30 years striving against sin, denying temptations? Hell no. Nah. You probably ain't even 30. <laughs> you understand? 
Probably ain't been here in 30 months. Brothers and sisters, do we we pray that you be filled with the desire to do his will. You understand? Because it starts with that. Go ahead. That he might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. We're praying that you walk worthy unto the Lord with all pleasing read. Being fruitful in every good work. We pray that you become fruitful. We don't want brothers and sisters. We especially brothers, we don't want you to be no soldier forever. We don't want you to be a 10 stuck in your damn rank. We don't want that. How you think that make us look? Yeah, Cal, you got brothers of money. How long that brother been a 10? What the hell you doing? Is you da -da -da? Man, look, man, I pray for that brother. Yeah. The hell is this? We pray that you brothers would come fruitful. Go ahead. And increasing in the knowledge of God. We pray that you increase in the knowledge of God, that you don't rest content with the little stuff that you've been learning for the past five, six years. You understand? Every time I stay, every time I sit down and really get in the scripts, I increase. I don't know enough. Every time I, that just show you how much I don't know. Every time I study, I learn something new. I increase in knowledge. You understand? So we pray that y'all had that same spirit to desire that and for the Lord to assist in that, to water that, to give that increase. Go ahead. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. We pray that you brothers and sisters are strengthened to overcome your flaws, to lay aside your malice, your evil doings, your evil speakings. We pray that the Lord give you strength to overcome. Read. Unto all patience and long suffering with joy. Because that's how you must come unto wisdom. It doesn't come like this. Right? Conversion doesn't happen overnight. We pray that you have the patience to endure, to go through the trials. You might have to sit through another MOV cycle. We pray that you have the patience to take advantage of that time and grow and study your ass off. And by the time the next cycle come, you, you damn MVP. You MOV MVP. You understand? That's what we pray happens to each and every last one of y'all. Now watch this. Titus chapter 1. So you have solutions, right, presented unto you. You have people praying for you, whether you believe it or not. But if you still don't want to get right, it's, it's on you. All right, Titus 1, verse 15. The book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 15. Read. Unto the pure, all things are pure. So you got to ask yourself, right? Unto the pure, all things are pure. This class, those scriptures, those references that, that he made. I all praises to the most high for that. I needed that. Mm -hmm. That's that's exact this all praise to the most high God for this class. Every scripture, everything brought out, I listen. Uh, my mind is geared towards taking it to the next level, right? Unto the pure, all things are pure. You're gonna receive it with meekness. Read. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving. But unto them that are either defiled and or unbelieving. Read. Is nothing pure. It's, dude, hate no. Dude, really hate me. Dude's made a whole class to sneak this me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, that dude, ain't, Cap ain't right. You, you heard all these scriptures just to think, formulate in your mind right now that I'm the devil. <laughs> Oops, hold that. Get Hebrews 12, 15, because it said him and to them that are defiled. What's one of the main things that defiles us? Watch this. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15. Go ahead. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Read 
lest any root of bitterness, lest any what? Root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. I, I, I need y'all to understand something. All it take is one rebuke. All it take is one. You understand? Just imagine if me and your relationship or you and another sister relationship was always, oh, bro, you in spirit. I like how you do this. I like how you do that. How was your day? Blah, blah, blah. It was always, every time, just strictly positive. And then one day, I get on your ass. Your spirit can do one or two things. <laughs> it can either receive the discipline that the righteous smite me or be offended, take it personal. How, why he getting on? He never get on me. like He never talked to me like this. You ain't heard. You didn't hear nothing spiritual out of what I said. You did not take what I was speaking of scripture or from the standpoint of a scripture. You didn't process it that way. Your mom's like, he don't do this to me. He must hate me. You understand? And from that day forward, every time you see me now, it's different. The, the smiles, and the laughing, the engagement, it's off. It's different. What has happened to you? A root of bitterness has taken root. You understand? And thereby many be what? Many be defiled. And I'm telling you, it's how a lot of brothers and sisters end up eventually going the hell off. All it takes is one. All it takes is one rebuke. I'm telling you. Go back to Titus chapter 1. Read verse 15 again. The book of Titus chapter 1 and verse 15. Go ahead. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. If you're defiled and you don't really believe, you understand, like I mentioned in the beginning of the, you trying it out. You trying to, you still got them crooked ways you're not willing to lay aside from you. You trying to see what the Lord got to offer. Looking, at, Listen. If you defiled and nor unbelieving, nothing will be pure to you. Nothing will be edifying. You understand? Read on. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. You processing, you processing everything the wrong way. Now watch this, verse 16. Verse 16. Uh-huh. They profess that they know God. You profess that you know God. You still will profess that you are Israelite. You still will put on fringes. You still will come to the school. Read. But in works, they deny him. But in your actions, is something different. Read. Being abominable. Being what? Abominable. Read. And disobedient. Disobedient. Read. And unto every good work. Reprobate. To every good work, reprobate, meaning void of judgment. Like I said, everything is an attack. Nothing can help you. You're covered with thorns that no man may travel through. You understand? That is the latter end of a can't get right spirit that doesn't examine themselves and repent. You understand? Watch this, last scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 3, read verse 7. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7. Go ahead. Ever learning and never able. Read that, read that part again. Ever learning. Ever learning. You a hearer of the word for sure. You understand? You memorized hella precepts. You got notebooks full of notes. Ever learning, but what? And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. But yet never able to fully participate in actual repentance. <laughs> you understand? You never laid aside the malice, the gal, the superfluity of naughtiness. You never, you never did that. You never truly understood 
that you must be tormented with discipline in order to grow. You can never accept that. You never, it was just certain crooked ways you just couldn't allow yourself to be purged from. You understand? Watch this, read verse 8. Verse 8. Go ahead. Now as Jennies and Jambres withstood Moses. So, somehow, I don't, don't want to say somehow, right? Because we understand that, of course, our forefathers that was in the land or even near the land so many thousands of years ago, right? They had they had more in depth knowledge of things that we see through a glass darkly today, right? But Janice and Jambres were two of the wizards that was in Egypt when Moses would come to Pharaoh and do a miracle. Those were two of the wizards that would try to emulate the miracle that Moses did instead of just humbling down and acknowledging, "Damn, they got a plan. We need to let them go." You understand, they withstood Moses. Same way it says, they read that part again, now is James. Now as Jennies and Jambres withstood Moses. Instead of humbling down, read. So do these also resist the truth. So what does this mean, right? This means that the classes will come out like this one. The council will come out at the council table. It will be verbalized to you via phone call. <laughs> you understand? This is what you need to do. This is the solution to your problem. This is why this is happening, and this is what you can do to stop it. Instead of humbling down, you, like Janice and Jane Breeze, will try to find alternative ways, you understand, to, in your mind, Continue moving forward in this truth when all you're doing is forcing a course of the river. You understand? You despise and reproof. You in the way of sinners. Read on. Men of corrupt minds. Men of corrupt minds. What we just read in Titus. Your mind and conscience is defiled. Nothing is pure to you. You know it all. You're right in your own eyes. You cannot be convinced or converted by a man that's like unto yourself. He can't tell you anything. There is no way that they have a God that's that serious about delivering them. No, we must, we must resist. We must make snakes out of this and turn water into blood. We must attempt everything we can do instead of just humbling down and listening and letting the damn people go. You know, that's yo, that's you. You got the same mentality. Resisting the advice, the instruction, the reproof that's offered unto you in love. So do these men resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, read. Reprobate concerning the faith. Ain't that what we just read in Titus? Word of judgment. This is super, what I'm bringing out is super plain to the righteous. It's like, whoo, she humped that. Man, if I ever fall into that, I know it's, it's super plain to the righteous. Well, right now, if it's you, but you're not acknowledging that it's you, you're in the now. Right now, at this moment, you are reprobate. You understand? Well, you're, I'll put it like this you're well on your way. While you living, there is hope. Let me make sure I. You know what I'm saying? Reassure that. Reinforce that. While you're living, there is hope. But this is an admonition for you. You understand? These type of men that resist the truth are reprobate concerning the faith. Watch this, verse 9. But they shall proceed no further. Read. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. So I want y'all to understand something. Janice and Jambres went nine whole plagues in their resistance. But eventually, it was revealed that they wasn't the real deal. You understand? They could not overcome the power of the Most High God. So likewise, eventually, unless you humble down and repent, be converted from that wicked mindset, that pride, Eventually, the Lord is going to manifest 
you were in the way of sinners. You hated to be reproved. You was trying to find some other way other than just humbling down to the might under the mighty hand of God to be exalted in due time. You understand? And you'll proceed no further. It's only a matter of time. All right? So, like I said, if this is you, if you are the can't get right spirit, first step is acknowledging. Second step is application. Before you know it, you will be growing thereby. On the flip side, you're still in denial. It ain't you. It's me. Shall I proceed no further? It's finally going to be manifest to everybody. So with that, Shalom Most High in Christ's place. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. is you.